Inspired by the Ganga, Swami Chinmayananda said to himself, I will take this knowledge in all its pristine glory to the plains below for the enrichment of humanity. But it was not quite that easy. His first challenge was to convince Swami Tapovanam, who was a staunch believer that a sannyasi should lead a life that revolved around studying the scriptures, going on pilgrimages, and teaching those who came to him. As a result, when Swamiji approached him, Swami Tapovan admonished him, You can't treat this knowledge like your newspaper business, he exclaimed. Swami Chinmayananda put the idea aside, but it began to surface again and again. In his own words, the vague mental suggestion, when suppressed, became almost a mighty call, an irresistible urge. One day, taking courage literally in both my hands, I declared my intentions to my guru again. I remember even today how his heavy brows came down, clouded by anxiety, almost stunned with surprise at my determination. You don't know what you're asking for. You will get permanently caught up in the wheel of work. That is the nature of all activity. We start the action, and later the activities themselves take charge of us. But a month later, he would call his student, and suggest that he take a trip down to the plains, wandering as a renunciate and living like a beggar, much like he himself had done. This will rub out your ego, Chinmaya. To have the experience of the divine is not enough. You must be able to keep that vision through all your activities. Go down to the plains and keep your mananam where it is the most difficult. When you face the adversities of life, you will not fall into the dangers of complacency and self-contentment in your spiritual discipline, he said. And thus, with his Guru's blessings, Swamiji began his journey in Delhi. He travelled on foot through the state of Andhra Pradesh and soon across Chennai. There, he made a trip to Arunachala for his second visit with the great saint, Bhagawan Sri Ramana Maharishi. Let us go back in time to revisit this meeting. At that just exact moment, he suddenly opened his eyes and looked straight into mine. A mere look, I felt that the Maharishi was in that split moment looking deep into me, that he knew everything about me, even things I did not know myself. I cannot explain what happened. After my college days, my political work, and after my years of stay at Uttarkashi at the feet of my master, Tapovanam, I knew that what I had gained on the Ganges banks was exactly that which had been given to me years before by the saint of Tiruvannamalai on that hot summer day by just a mere look. This time, Swamiji had a one-on-one -on -one satsanga with the saint. The sage fondly recollected Swami Tapovanam, who had visited him as well. He then went on to Kanyakumari, where in 1892, Swami Vivekananda was inspired to spread the message of Hinduism to the West. Circling up the coast, Swamiji finally reached his hometown in Kerala. His family gave him a warm welcome. And finally, in October 1951, he returned to Uttarkashi. His notes about this trip read, I travelled on foot for six months, living on bhiksha, sleeping in ashrams, temples and under wayside trees. Swamiji was correct. It was quite an experience in rubbing off the ego. Education, social status, family connections, prejudices, these were no longer mine. When people don't know who you are, they consider you an inconvenient beggar, a worthless monk, an unproductive member of the community, and they insult you 
with looks of abhorrence, as if you were something that the cat dragged in. If you ask me, this kind of treatment is the best cure for the ego disease. By now, Swamiji had witnessed firsthand the spiritual degradation of his homeland. His resolve to bring the knowledge of the truth to them was even stronger now. During the trip, he had stayed with Mr. Nanda, who had suggested that Swamiji deliver a series of talks on the Upanishads in Pune. So once again, Swamiji approached his guru with the idea. Pune? There are so many Brahmin scholars there. How will you tackle them? They will not allow a Swami talking on the scriptures. But at the same time, Swami Tapovan knew how determined his student was. He could see in Chinmaya's face the signs of enlightenment. His face was calm and serene like the moon. His mind seemed constantly in reflection of the Self and displayed a fullness that was only possible with bliss. He knew it was time for Swamiji to start sharing what he himself had experienced. The next stop was Ananda Kutir in Rishikesh to get the blessings of Swami Shivananda, who was overjoyed and readily approved of his plan. He himself had made many such trips to the plains to teach the scriptures. Go roar like Vivekananda, he said to Swamiji. He also wrote him a letter sharing his thoughts. It is a grand idea. Spread of the message of the Upanishads is the need of the hour. You will be doing the greatest service to the Lord's children by taking to their very doors the sublimest of wisdom. The Rishis will shower their blessings upon you. The Lord's grace will enable you to attain success in this divine undertaking. May God bless you with health, long life, peace, prosperity and Kaivalya Moksha. Thy own self, Shivananda. Some of the other Swamis were not that confident. What if the response isn't good? What if they don't appreciate what you say? What will you do then? They questioned. What will I do? I am a sannyasi. I keep my bags packed. If they like what I say, I'll stay. If they don't, I'll leave. It is as simple as that, replied Swamiji. And thus, with four anas in his pocket and a small trunk filled with notes and books with the words Divine Mission carefully lettered on it, Swami Chinmayananda arrived in Pune on December 23, 1951. For the first Upanishad Ganga, he had planned a hundred-day event starting on December 31st. Mrs. Sushila Mudaliyar and Mr. Gopal Reddy were two contacts who would prove invaluable in organizing the early yagyas. There were only a few days left and no workers to publicize the yagya. So, Swamiji borrowed a turban, a vest, a cycle and a megaphone and in disguise he went around town on the cycle, shouting at the top of his voice, Come and listen to the Swami who has come from Uttarkashi and is giving good talks in English. He would write, On the opening day, I had an audience of 18 to address. My heart jumped with joy. His introductory talk was titled, let us be Hindus, and here's how he began. A Hindu Swami to talk, a Hindu temple for a background, a Hindu audience, and the subject for discussion, let us be Hindus. Strange, it sounds like a ridiculous paradox and a meaningless contradiction, doesn't it? I can very well see that you're surprised at the audacity of this Swami. He then went on 
building up his case for the revival of Hinduism. And in conclusion, he says, Let us be Hindus and thus build up a true Hindustan peopled with thousands of Shankaras, hundreds of Buddhas and dozens of Vivekanandas. Then the talks on the Upanishads would begin. The texts were the Kena Upanishad and the Katopanishad. Swamiji began the discourse as if the entire hall were filled with interested listeners. He put aside all concerns for success or failure and spontaneously began to expound the wonders of the scriptures. He prepared the audience by introducing terms and the language of the Upanishads. For sixty days he only focused on the introduction itself and these talks are considered to be Swamiji's best on this subject. He spoke from the highest standpoint. The delivery was simply wonderful. His powerful voice rang out the eternal truths of life but in a simple, modern but witty style. The listeners were astounded and they were compelled to come back every day and day by day the crowd swelled. The audience overflowed outside the temple into the lanes around it and soon the lanes were filled up. People then started to sit in the streets around the temple, all the way to the main road, listening to Swamiji's voice through the loudspeakers that were arranged. Hariyom Namaskar. We are sure you like the video. For more such amazing videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon.